Hello, and we're talking about active transport now for IGCSE level. Very often a cell can't get hold of everything it needs by diffusion alone. Let's just remind ourselves how diffusion works. Imagine here that this is a y-axis representing concentration. I'm just going to write conch there. I've got a high concentration here and a low concentration here. Well, because particles move at random when they're in a liquid or a gas, so they will happen to move by diffusion from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So let's say there's a molecule outside you and you want to get hold of it, maybe it's oxygen, and it's at a high concentration, and inside you, as a cell, it's at low concentration, you've got a concentration gradient from high to low, and it can roll down. Indeed, you might even imagine that it's some kind of football, that it's rolling down a slope like that. You can see very easily that that football's going to run down the slope. You're not going to have to put any extra energy into it. Well, that's fine, but very often that isn't the case. Sometimes the substances that you need are in a very low concentration surrounding the cell. And if that is the case, what cells can do is that there is a way they can move these particles uphill against a concentration gradient. So we have our same axis here with concentration low down there and high here. And there's our football. And we're moving it from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. But immediately you can see, well, if you're going to be pushing that football up a hill, it's going to require extra energy input from you whereas in diffusion no energy input is required. So this type of transport is active. It's active transport because it's going to require extra energy input. And an example to think of of cells which use this would be root hair cells of plants. Here are some root hair cells and you can see immediately their huge surface area uh, generated by these projecting out in the, into the soil from the root. But let's say we've got NO3 minus out here, that's nitrates, or Mg2 plus out here. Now, I've written these here in the soil, but of course they're in a much higher concentration already in the root hair cell. And certainly in the plant uh, and in the xylem of the plant, they're going to be in a fairly high concentration. So, to get NO3 minus our nitrate ions to go in, or our Mg2 plus our magnesium ions to go into the root hair cell, we will need to move them uphill against a concentration gradient and therefore these plant root hair cells will take these nitrate and magnesium ions in by active transport. Next thing to think about is how they do it. Well, there are two things we're going to think about as requirements. Number one, carrier proteins and number two, energy. And that energy is going to come from respiration uh, and hopefully from aerobic respiration which occurs in the mitochondria. And let's remind ourselves of the, qu the equation quickly for it. That is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 goes to 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Remember that equation. Let's think about how these protein carriers do it. This here is the membrane. These molecules here, they are called phospholipids. It's not a word you need to know in IGCSE, but they're fats, they're lipids, and they're making the cell membrane. The cell membrane is largely made out of fat, but the cell membrane also has a fairly large protein component to it, and this is just one such of those proteins. It's a carrier protein, and what it's doing here is it's changing shape and moving these particles here inside. We've got a low concentration on this side of the membrane and a high concentration on this side of the membrane here. And the only way these particles are going to move through is by energy being put into it because they are going to be going against their concentration gradient. They're going to be going uphill. So what happens is that these will happen just to bump into the binding site of the carrier protein. At that point, the shape is changed of this carrier protein, and energy is used to change that shape, and then that essentially moves our particle to the other side. It's released, and therefore we've pumped lots of these particles in. 
And really, that's a, just about all there is to it. And all you really need to remember for IGCSE is that NG is required, that there are carrier proteins involved, there's a change of shape involved, and that it goes uphill against the concentration gradient. Other than to say that these carrier proteins are specific, just as enzymes are specific and have a specific active site and will only bind to one particular substrate, so these carrier proteins are very specific and the binding side of this carrier protein will only bind to a specific particle or molecule. So a carrier protein for Mg2 plus will not be able to pick up nitrates, NO3 minus. So let's have a think about this question here. Why do many plants die in waterlogged soil? Hmm. I'm going to start off by drawing a root hair cell here. I'm going to draw it very badly. There we go. That is a poor drawing of a root hair cell. There's another cell next to it. There's another cell next to it here. Uh, and I would draw a double thickness of the cell wall, but I won't because I can't be bothered right now. And we're wanting to get Mg2 plus into this cell. We've got Mg2 plus out here. We've also got a fair bit of Mg2 plus out here. And therefore, to get this Mg2 plus in, we're going to need to do it by active transport. That's fine. They can do that. We've got carrier proteins to do that. But as we've already said, this is going to require energy. And where is that energy going to come from? It's going to come from aerobic respiration. And so, we're going to also need a fair bit of O2 inside these cells to do our aerobic respiration. And the mitochondria inside of them, here's a little mitochondrion. Uh, inside the cell. Uh, I know I haven't drawn a vacuole around here. But yeah, I know. And this O2 will go to the mitochondria uh, and they will release energy and that energy will be used to move an energy 2 plus. But what happens when this O2 runs out? Well, ordinarily in the soil that's all right. The O2 can just diffuse into the soil. Of course, if this O2 here is used up, that's going to make a low concentration of O2 there, and so there's going to be a higher concentration out here, and that will just diffuse back in like that. And that's fine. But what if the soil is suddenly flooded with water? Here we go. Now there's still Mg2 plus around, so we can still move that in theoretically, but now that we've flooded it with water, there's very little oxygen in the soil. That means that we can't release energy from glucose in respiration, and therefore we can't provide our carrier proteins with the energy they need to move that Mg2 plus uphill against this concentration gradient. And therefore the plant won't get the mineral lines it needs, and so many plants do die in waterlogged soil. This is a way to get around it. This is a plant which is adapted to live in waterlogged soils. And you can see here, it's got these very clever uh, tissues here called aronchyma. And they allow oxygen to diffuse from the leaves all the way down to the roots. And that's very useful. Thank you. I hope that's helpful.